In today's video, we are going to be looking at an iPhone with a motherboard problem and all the simple and logical steps that you can take in order to diagnose and then resolve the problem as quickly as possible. Here is an iPhone. The model really doesn't matter here. What's important is the diagnostic process. Here I have a charger and you can see it's on with 5 volts shown in red on the display. Once I plug the charger into the device, in blue you can see how much current the phone is taking. This looks like a normal boot process and charging current and so it seems the phone powers on normally but there is nothing showing on the display. After a short time, we know the boot process has completed because the home button clicks. So as I start to notice what's happening, as I plug the phone in and I can see the current going into the phone, I'm starting to think, hmm, okay, this phone appears to be turning on. But customers explained that they've just been into another, another shop with something to do with the screen. So my first assumption is, okay, they've got a faulty screen. I can put a new screen on here. Uh, jobs are good and, and they'll be on their way happy. Um, but so uh, I went through the process, I took this screen off, uh, I connected up another screen which I knew was working. Um, you know, it's been tested on another phone and I could see that that one lights up and it functions perfectly. But I put it on this phone and I still get nothing. Uh, and so as I plug this phone in, um, you know, I let the I let the boot sequence go on for a little while, maybe the battery was flat, let it charge for a little while and see what happens. And sure enough, after a few minutes, the home button starts to click. And hopefully you'll be able to hear, you'll be able to hear the clicking in the video. And so that tells me, yes, the phone is successfully booted. I just can't see anything on the screen. So what do we do? How can we troubleshoot this? First thing that I'm thinking is I want to look at where does that screen connect to because that's going to be where the signal comes from to display the image so i'm going to want to look at the uh, screen connector and make sure that everything is okay there uh, and hopefully try to find something and, and at least start from there uh, in trying to find out what the cause of the issue is so we can bring the phone under the microscope and begin to have a look at the area where the lcd connects and this program here shows a diagram of the motherboard and we're able to zoom in to the area and match it up with what we can see on the actual motherboard uh, and then look at the two LCD connectors as you can see there are two connectors for the LCD the top shorter one is more to do with the touch function and home button and the longer one just underneath that is the one that we're more interested in as it deals with the the actual image displayed on the LCD. And so what you can also see on the diagram is that it's got all these what they call diode mode readings. So on each one of those pins you see there on the board, it's got a you know it's got a reading and you go through on your multimeter and you just check, you know. And you, my readings are never exact on there, but they're they're a roundabout, they're a good approximation basically so what I'm doing is right here is I'm just looking for you know I'm looking on the on my screen to see what number I need and then I'm taking the reading pin by pin just going through systematically just checking that each thing is measuring what it's supposed to. Pin 1 beeps and shows a short to ground and if we look over on ZXW we see that that should not be the case. The reading that we're expecting is 0.497 or thereabouts, anywhere around there is fine. Uh, we actually get a short to ground so there's a problem there on that line something's gone wrong and instead of the the power getting there it's supposed to be a 5.7 volt line instead of that power getting there it's going straight to ground which would seem a very reasonable explanation as to why the screen is not lighting up there's no power so if we take a look at that line here on zxw 
Uh, we can see pin 1, it connects directly to this capacitor C3913. Uh, but we can't see anywhere else it goes, so we'll zoom out. And if we check up here, it then goes to another couple of components here, another capacitor, and then into a filter. So if we click the other end of this filter, we'll see a few more components that it connects to uh, before ending up at this chip. Now ZXW is fantastic at showing us all the bits that are connected to each other. Uh, but what it doesn't show us is in what order they're connected to each other. And that's where the schematics would come in. So if we, if we start here on this chip here, U3903, we see that it starts at pin A3. So if I come to the schematics and we can see the pin A3 down here. So from this chip, pin A3 connects directly to capacitor 3712. That is this one here. So that's the first one in the line. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm not even gonna uncover this, uh, this chip, this U3703, because I wanna start at the easiest points. So I'm thinking it has to be one of these capacitors on the line has probably failed because they do fail sometimes. And then when a capacitor fails, it um, you, have, you have one end connected to the line and then one end connected to ground for a capacitor well, most of the time. And so when it fails, that capacitor basically becomes a wire and connects your line to ground. So it shorts it to ground. That seems to be what the problem is on this phone. You guessed it, we're going to use freeze spray to hopefully tell us where this problem is. So you spray it on, it gets really cold, you blow it and uh, it frosts over and then basically you come along with some probes and put a little bit of power through the suspicious line and watch what happens and see if you can see the first bit that melts. You need a quick eye to catch it uh, but, you know, and there it goes, you can see it. So as we saw, we came along with the probes there. There's two volts on the power supply. Put the two volts into the line and anywhere on that line will do. And you can see immediately the problem component. That's where the ice melts first and that's where your problem lies. We now know which was the faulty component. So we can simply come in and remove that from the board and replace it with a new one. So we'll just prepare the board to take a new component and put some hot air on there and see surface tension at work as it snaps it into position. And then once that's all on and uh, we're happy with that, we can come along and retest the connector just to ensure that everything is now as it should be. And then we can go ahead and put the phone back together and see if it turns on. Now, unfortunately, I did forget to put my overhead camera on for this bit, but this view just about shows what we need to see. So we put the screen on, plug the power back in, and then you'll see that the Apple logo does indeed come back on. So we can call that a successful repair. Now that is it for today's video. Uh, so like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. And if you, if you like the style of video, or even if you didn't like the style of video, let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.